What's up guys, this is Wolf from From Scratch, and welcome back to another Civilization 5 guide. Uh, last week, if you were watching, I finished off the last of the, my Brave New World guides, and I finished with a Shark of the Zulus, pretty much the Zerg Rush civilization of this game. So I'm um, back to the regular civilization from Gods and Kings and Vanilla C Civilization 5. So today I'm doing Theodora of Byzantium. And I'm not talking about that vampires called Byzantium. I'm talking about... Interesting courtesan, you became the powerful woman in the Roman Empire, consort to the late 520s AD. You joined your husband in a series of important spiritual and legal reforms, creating many laws which elevated the status of and promoted equal treatment of women in the Empire. You also aided in the restoration and construction of many aqueducts, bridges and churches across Constantinople, culminating in the creation of the Hagia Sophia, one of the most splendid architectural wonders of the world. Beautiful Empress, Byzantium is in need of your wisdom and strength. Her people are lost without your light to lead them. The Byzantine Empire may have fallen once, but its spirit is still intact, waiting to be reborn anew. Can you return Byzantium to the heights of glory it once enjoyed? Can you create a civilization to stand the test of time? Lovely. So as you can see, the Byzantine special ability is Patriot, 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 yeah, Patriarchate of Constantinople, which means you can choose one more belief than normal when you found a religion. Now, I, and I will show you this in this episode, how that affects your choices for religion. But what this means... And if you have played Civ before, and you've seen when you're founding religion, you have the little spot at the bottom, which is reserved only for the Byzantines. Well, when you play as Byzantium, you get that a special slot, which means you have an extra follower belief, which can be very useful to getting lots of culture and gold and so on. But you can also have enhanced beliefs as well, meaning you can spread your religion faster. The only problem with the special ability and it's why I sort of shy away from Byzant the Byzantine Empire, is that they don't have any mean to create this faith. So, it's fantastic when you have it. However, you really will. However, you don't have any special ability to get it. Anyway, Byzantium has two, two unique units, as well as having mostly a coastal bias, majority of the time. You can't always count on that. Especially is Morocco in the desert. That's a good example. But they have two special units, which I will show you shortly. He who commands the sea has command of everything. Lovely little quote there. So upon researching sailing, you'll unlock the Byzantine unique unit, or unique naval unit, the Dromon. The Dromon replaces a trireme. It has the same movement as a trireme, that being four. The difference here is, is that it, it essentially is a galleas, and it, as well, you can also build galleasses as well. The Dromon shoots Greek fire, which is like an ancient version of a flamethrower and a precursor to napalm. The cool thing, and it, as well as following the same laws as a regular trireme, not entering deep ocean, is it's a range unit, and it's a very good one at that, meaning. Not only you can use it for scouting, as you would for a trireme, getting to know your continent, or continent, continents, or continent. But also, if you can set up some good barbarian culture farming, if you use honor, which, as Byzantium, you should take advantage of. It also is very good if you plan to do some naval attacks to get some. St if if another player has taken some key strategic land you want, the Dromon is by far the superior naval unit, and I'd say probably maybe the best naval unit of the classical era in this game, with the except maybe just pipping Polynesia with their special ability. So, I'll move on to the next Byzantium so special himself. feature. Friend the Dromon. There is the little, there's the, dr the Greek fire, the dragon's breath symbol. And as we can see right here, it's powered by both sails, sails and oars. And it's, as you can see, you can already see it's something different, something out extraordinary compared to the trireme, which it is. It really is a very useful unit, and I, I tend to regret regret upgrading some of these until I have a replacement frigate unit, because they are so good at wearing down cities for sieges. 
However, the trade-off that you make them into caravels, so you need that for the World Congress. So, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword so, trade-off. as you can see, my great prophet is born, and now I can found a religion, and I can make use of the Byzantine special ability. Um, yep, we'll just do that. So as you can see, if you're playing normally, you'd see this bottom column here, or this bottom section, would be locked out. Now, regardless of whatever I can pick for this, I can pick things like ancestor worship, which are panth, which are, which is a pantheon, not pantheon, sorry, which is a founder belief, as well as picking follower beliefs, such as in through this section. So I have more than enough options, and if I want. To, if I was lucky, I could have cathedrals, mosques, and pagodas. That's probably not the best combination, but I could take... I could, I've also got options as well, as pantheon options as well. Which means I've taken God of the Sea, as you can, as you can see, no pun intended, because I've got lots of crabs nearby. If I wanted to, I could take Ancestor Worship, if I wanted that, although I'm not planning on going wide. And so on, so on, so on. I could take fertility rights, which is considered to be a very good belief. So it means I have a lot of options open to me. And what it can, and what I would recommend is picking a belief that will that will allow you to spread your religion even faster. So in the second follower, in the enhancer belief, sorry, I can you can pick the bonus that when you unlock printing press, your religion will spread twice as fast. Which, as Byzantium, you want to be doing since you should be playing in a faith-focused manner. Like the Celts, except you don't have the luxury of having the special ability. So I'll pick... I, I, on that note, I will pick... Uh, oh, there's lots of beliefs here, isn't there? Um, oh, I can, right here. I can pick it right now. Religious text. Here we go. Uh, it is a good idea to... Make sure what you have. I'll take tithe as well. And since I'm playing culturally, I'll take cathedrals. And then once I get my second... My second belief... My second, sorry, second prophet, which shouldn't be too far away, I'll be really be able to start really kick-starting my religion and spreading it to all the city-states, Germany and Persia of my col of my continent. And, of, and the other civs of, in your game as well. So that's how the religion, how the extra belief slot works for Byzantium. And so I'm going to move now on to their unique unit, which is only two turns away. A horse. A horse. My kingdom for a horse. Well, I'll be willing to trade my kingdom for this special horse unit. So upon researching horseback riding, you'll be able to unlock the cataphract, which replaces the regular horseman. This by the Byzantine unique unit, the cataphract, is it sacrifices one movement point, so three instead of the regular four, inst and instead gains three more strengths of three more strength points or strength figures, fifteen instead of twelve. It also negates some of the penalty this unit has for attacking cities, and also it can fortify, giving it defensive bonuses, which unfor the fortification does not carry across across on when you upgrade this unit to a knight, unfortunately. So with the added strength and the decreased movement, this unit is the cataphract is designed for one thing and that's smashing through your enemy's lines. It's a stronger and it really and in the early game it is incre it is incredibly invaluable and the strongest cavalry cavalry unit until knights, which is a bit implied really since it is the only true cavalry unit of the classical era. Whether or not you can be truly sold on this unit, it depends whether or not you're willing to sacrifice that movement point for the strength. And if you're big into using horsemen, any horsemen instead horsemen in the early game. Whether or not I use that personally, horsemen horsemen in the early game, is depends on whether or not I plan on going aggressive. But in a few turns, I'll summarize the Byzantine civilization, and I'll tell you why it's a good trade-off for the Cataphract. Overall, I think it's a good, strong unit, and it, will be, it means you'll be able to smash through not only warriors, which you should be able to do anyway,
but also the basic swordsman. So, I'll show you the, the cataract in the flesh, hopefully I'll be able to smash through some barbarians, and then I'll summarise the Byzantine so cataract, as you can see, the nice little horse, armoured horse icon. Here it is, it, yeah, it essentially is a very armoured horse with some armoured riders. Sacrificing that movement means, unlike a regular horseman, I, wouldn't, I can't attack this unit, unfortunately. Actually, I don't think I would be able to take it, attack it anyway. But if it was flat terrain, I wouldn't be able to attack it. <laughs> so, to summarise the Byzantine civilization as a whole, it really comes down to whether or not you, li you, like, this, you like the trade-offs you get for, from Byzantium. The most obvious one in their special ability is that of their faith bonus. The, f the ability for them to pick another belief, another follower, enhancer, so on, pantheon, as you saw earlier, can be incredibly powerful. It means you it means you could have desert folklore and fertility rites, desert folklore and tears of the gods, or something like that. It means you have a very strong religious base. However, because you don't get any bonuses to accumulating that faith, means you really need to obviously get pottery first so you can build shrines ASAP. Build, I would recommend building a scout first instead of a monument, unlike I did, just so just so you can find and hope for a religious city-state. That way you can get some added faith to get your pantheon first, and obviously take a pantheon belief that will give you added, added faith, such as Desert Folklore or Dance of the Aurora, or any of the other ones, such as the Masonry, Gold, so on. Whatever is near, and st near your starting location. So many people don't like that you don't get a faith belief as Byzantium, even though you are re a religion-focused civilization. But that's the trade-off. And because of that, you need to prioritize Stonehenge. I managed to do that. I managed to do that. And I, am, I know I'm playing on the normal difficulty. So on the harder difficulties, this may be problematic. But, but by get, you need to prioritize Stonehenge and the upper section of the tech tree. That is the religion focus one. Stonehenge, obviously, five faith will really get you kickstarted for religion. Theology is the big one, and green the Hagia Sophia, not only because it's historically accurate, but also the free great prophet, pro the free great prophet, plus the added faith, will also be incredibly powerful. In terms of social policies, then you need to take piety. In fact, piety is more more of a must, and you would be silly not to take piety as Byzantium. They're unique units, the cataract it is a stronger horseman, and use it not only to take care of barbarians, but also to, to break through any, any sieve that try and rush you, such as the Huns, or even Germany occasionally. The Dromon, where is it? Up here. The Dromon is very similar to a trireme, except, except it has the features of a Gallias, which makes it incredibly invaluable. It also has, and I didn't mention this earlier, a 50% bonus against naval units, because it is, well, it's it's a flamethrower, it's fighting fire, it's using fire on wooden hulls. This unit is incredibly good, and many a time when attacking Byzantium, even into the medieval era, the AI has one-shotted longswordsmen from landing by having a, a drum on in its cities. So not only being a useful tool of exploration as well as barbarian culture farming, it's also good as defense, it, defense by keeping your cities if you ever get attacked and early rushed. So in terms of strategy Byzantium, as I've been keep, as I keep saying, religion, 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 but but therefore, because of the cultural tie-ins that religion has, I would recommend going for a cultural victory as Byzantium. Because you not only do you get cathedrals, but also the nice little cult cultural benefits that the belief that the faith beliefs give you. On the other hand, Byzantium can make some very good, some very very good, aggressive gains due to their unique units, the Dromon and the Cataract. Because of this, you can either attack a few early sieves if they do try and settle near you, or take or try and wipe them out, puppeting if you still want to go for a cultural victory, or you can completely wipe away the cultural victory and go for a domination victory. Similar to Rome, in that they have two classical units, meaning for some two early 
making for some early pushes. However, I would be more inclined to go for the religious, cultural side, as if you do go down the domination path, you won't be able to focus so much on your religion, and you will be sort of wasting your unique your unique ability. So, that's my my guide to the Byzantine civilization, a religious, navally fo- focused civilization, with a with a really nice semi-defensive unit of the cataphract. So tune in next week for another gu- Civilization Five guide. Who will it be? Got no idea actually. So tune in next time as I figure out which got which sieve to do. And that's me, Wolf out.